May the Lord be with you. It is pleased Almighty God to summon out of his veil of tears the soul of Jim Comer. He, uh, his visitation is at Hal Peterson today from 2 until 8 p.m. And he will lie in state tomorrow at St. John's at 10. Funeral service will be at 11. The tournament will be the following day at Glen Eaton Cemetery. I believe that's a private um, uh, internment. Um, I believe that's all that needs to be said there. Our order of service for this third Sunday of Lent is page 151 in the hymnal, the Divine Service of Holy Communion. Are there other announcements that need to be made? Yes, Pastor. Yes. There will be a brief choir rehearsal for the hymnal immediately after the service today in the balcony. Uh, choir, do not try to find these folders. They're very photographic. Very good. All right. Uh, that shall be particularly meaningful. Jacob? Uh, Jacob. 151 or 167? Yeah, we have two different ones. One I think it's 167. Okay. It could be slightly confusing. I'm confused. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be 167. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, there are no other announcements that need to be made. Um, I guess I should remind you that we have soup supper at the Linton uh, service on Wednesday. Soup supper at 6, the service at 7. And our opening hymn is hymn 614 based on the uh, Old Testament lesson, which is the basis for the message today as well. May the Lord bless our worship.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We may kneel.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast love to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We may sit for the readings. Will you prolong your anger to all generations? 
tree planted in his vineyard. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for these three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We may sit for the hymn 691. themselves to 
more. And after 20 years of attending church, they decided there were more important things in life like relaxing on Sunday morning. I have even known of two men who after 25 years or more of normal sexuality and fathering several children apiece decided that family <clears throat> decided to leave that family and live with someone else. One is a gay man and the other is a transsexual. The grim fact is that life's direction can change and any one of us even a whole generation can fall into sin, get off the narrow way that leads to life, and take the easy road, or maybe I should say the exciting, attention-getting road that leads to eternal death. In our Old Testament text for today, Ezekiel addresses a generation that had turned away from the right path and embraced sin of various kinds. Some had been unfaithful to God, mixing their worship of the true God, Jehovah, with idolatry, hedging their bets as if worship of both would gain blessing from at least one. Others had not embraced gross idolatry, in idolatry in the obvious outward sense, but their religion was indifferent to God's law. They lived as it suited them, their religion serving their needs rather than living to serve God's holy purpose. And how many of us can say that we are different? I tremble when I consider whether I have served God's will or my own. Whether I have labored for God's honor or for my own. Whether I have exerted myself as much out of love for God as out of fear of His punishment, temporal as well as eternal. This is why we pray, lead us not into temptation, which means bring us not to the test. Yes, if God desired the death of the sinner, none of us would be spared. None of us should be spared. But the very phenomenon of change, life change, specifically a change of life's direction, is proclaimed by the Lord to be possible for us sinners. Surely I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that he turn from his wickedness and live. It is not our life's achievements that determine our eternal fate, but rather our life's direction. And for good or evil, we can change direction. Now this is contrary to the way a lot of people perceive life. They divide the world into good or bad. They are always among the good. They may define good in various ways. Some think that always obeying the one in authority makes them good, even if that authority is a Stalin or a Hitler. Others think that being smart is what makes them good, whether being smart is working the hardest or being the best at avoiding work. We all define smart in different ways. And in this world, being loyal to people like yourself is what counts. If God's judgment is nothing, then the judgment of other people, people we have to get along with, is everything. So such people will lie in court to protect their friends, because good is protecting me and mine. Are you shocked at this? It is natural to people and only those who believe in a transcendent value, a transcendent God who cares about truth and integrity, will place truth above their loyalty to people. Only those who believe in a transcendent God who cares about integrity and will keep a promise like a marriage vow or a pledge of allegiance or a confirmation promise or even a mortgage contract 
when it fails to profit them in some way. There was once a tennis coach who went scouting for players. He saw some kids in gym class working on some skills and spoke to several. To one he said, son, you've got the makings of a real tennis player. With the right coaching, you could go far. And the kid replied, yeah, I'm pretty good and I got that way on my own. I don't need any help. The scout went away thinking that prospect was hopeless. He talked to another kid who looked pretty frustrated. If you hold your racket like this, your balls will go over the net. And the kid replied, I tried it that way, it didn't work. I'm hopeless. The scout didn't waste any further time with that prospect. And then he came to a third student who seemed eager to learn more, was confident that he could improve, and trusted the older man's experience. This illustrates the change that can occur for us. Left on our own, we will never make the grade. We may be conceited and think we are good enough, or that we can make it to heaven on our own, but we are believing the devil's lies and are secure in our sins, maintaining the course to eternal death. Or we may despair altogether, like that rich young ruler who was unwilling to pay the cost of discipleship, unwilling to love God above all other things. And so he turned away from Jesus, sad, because he had a lot of money he wanted to hold on to. But those who recognize their need for help, those who look to the master who invites them, whose confidence is in the one who calls and instructs them, this is the one whose life direction is changed from conceit and frustration into growth and service and witness, all culminating in the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. God is calling you this day to examine what direction your life is taking. If you are growing in love to the self, to the contempt of God and His will, you are headed in the direction of eternal dying. For you are drifting, if not marching away from the source of forgiveness and life. The proper direction is to grow in the love of God even to the contempt of self. Our life is given so that we may sacrifice it in service to God through our worship and through our service, love and care for others. Many of us have neglected this path of love to God. But God's message is that He does not wish our death, but rather that we turn from sin and live. It is our direction from henceforth that matters. This new direction is available to us by Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He came to fulfill the law, the righteous will of God for us. Now our future is no longer determined by our past. That sin is wiped away for those who believe. The temporal effects of our sin remains with us. Our broken relationships, our fractured health, our old lusts, resentments, greeds, and regrets, they will plague us, and Satan will use them to discourage us on the journey. But we have help in the Lord. The Holy Spirit, God present in our lives, renews our faith and determination to pursue the path of righteousness. Oh, we shall stumble at times. Even step off the path, perchance. But the Spirit calls us by the Gospel and propels us in the right direction despite disappointment, sorrow, loss, and disillusionment. Remember the hymn, Jesus, lead thou on till our rest is won. And although the path be cheerless, we will follow calm and fearless. Show us that bright shore where we weep no more. Not all of following Christ is cheerless. Indeed, there is much ordinary daily blessing to 
give thanks for. But we ought not be surprised that we face temptations and uphill hardships on the way. Ezekiel preached this change of life, this repentance to a nation coming to terms with defeat in war, exile, and slavery. We have yet to face the hardships, violence, and, and flight, destitution, and famine all too common even in our modern world. But even in those circumstances, we can pursue the path of holiness, the way of life, the direction that is heavenward. For God works within us. The gospel as our compass. The word of God as our map. And the blessed country as our destination. Continue on, my fellow pilgrims. On the path you were called, unhindered by what lay in the past. The upward path in Christ our Lord, who is even now sitting at the right hand Father, waiting to welcome us. May your life's direction lead to that place of no regrets, but only praise for what God enables you to do through faith. Amen. Amen. And may this true faith guide your steps in a fruitful walk with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 While we stand, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on the inside cover, back cover. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and for life everlasting. Amen. We may sit to, re to receive the offering. Please sign the friendship registers, the green pads at the ends of the pews.
us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Christian Church that God may strengthen our faith through the word that we have heard. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have called us to be a pilgrim people, not making this our home, but seeking one that is above. Bless your people with faith to pursue righteousness and holiness, to prize it above any temporal prize. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for the mission of the church, that many more may hear the word of God and come to faith. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless your people at St. John's Lutheran Church, our fellowship in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and every Christian assembly where believers gather around the Word and the sacraments, that your people may grow, not for their sakes, but for the sake of those who are in need of salvation, the forgiveness of sins, and new direction in life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray for our nation and our leaders, that they may be of God's servants for our good. Heavenly Father, in these difficult times, give our leaders insight into the common good and courage to promote the same. We pray for our President, Joseph Biden, our Governor, Gretchen Whitmer, our legislators, judges, magistrates, and all public servants. Enable us, Lord, to respect them as your servants for our good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve in our nation and in the armed forces. Lord, we remember those who serve in the military, in the police, and in other, in other service that is dangerous. Lord, we give thanks for these who are willing to serve, and we ask that you would bless them and protect them in that service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the, let us pray for the troubled in heart or mind who are in need of our prayers. Heavenly Father, there are those listed in our bulletin in need of special blessing. And there are many more whose needs are known to you. Lord, we commend them into your hands, asking that you would give what is needful, and that you would open our eyes to where we can be of service to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for the sick and the shut-in and those who care for them. Lord, there are many names in our bulletin who are in need of healing. You know their needs. Lord, we pray that you would give them healing not only of body, but also soul and spirit. Lord, bless those in the medical fields and give them the grace that they need to use their arts and learning for to relieve human suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in the family way and those with young children. Lord, we remember Brian and Sarah who are due in May, Lexi and White who are due in June, others who have uh, the care of young children. We give thanks, Lord, that you have blessed Aaron and Mark with the gift of a healthy child in this past week, and we ask your continued blessing through the gift of children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's give thanks and prayer for special blessings received. Lord, we thank you for the celebration of life, our, the 92nd birthday of Dale Rodkowski and my own 67th week. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us and help us to give thanks every day for the gift of life and all the blessings that it entails. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's ask God's blessing on a particular matter of concern. Heavenly Father, you have called to yourself, James Cohn, 
who was a pillar of this congregation and of his family. Lord, it is difficult to return such a great blessing, but we rejoice that he died in the faith, surrounded by the people he loved. And we ask, Lord, that you would comfort the family, those who mourn this loss. We humbly ask this in Jesus, who overcame death for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the offertory. This do as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.